NoCodeDB is an open source alternative to Airtable, and it made a big splash in 2021 when it first launched on Hacker News. Since then, it's accrued over 40,000 stars on GitHub, and it's used by organizations all over the world as a self-hosted alternative to Airtable. But the question on my mind is, will their new cloud offering hold up against all the different Airtable alternatives that exist and give them a monetization option that will help provide stability for the future? Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated through portals, apps, and internet integrations. Before we go ahead and dive into the software, let's take a look at the pricing to see what this is going to look like with their new cloud offering. You'll notice right off the bat that NoCodeDB Cloud is available for free in technical preview. So this is kind of a beta that we're in right now. I'm sure we'll see some changes before they actually start charging for this. And like many other applications out there, they're going to have a freemium model where it's totally free on the low end, as well as an enterprise offering. And then there's two paid plans in the middle. Now, the biggest reason to use their cloud offerings really is going to be around price. So you can can see that this looks like it's going to start at $99 and up for their business plan. And $99 is going to include 20 users. So imagine paying about five bucks a month a user. That's considerably less expensive than what you'd be paying on Airtable. In addition, you'll be getting 300,000 rows per workspace. This is a little bit different of a setup than Airtable has where they charge you on the number of records per base. Instead, this is your entire workspace altogether. So for a lot of people, this is going to be more than enough data where you might have one table that is really populous. Maybe you have a lot of different contacts you're interacting with, and then you have other tables that don't need quite as much data. The other part I really like about this is that they mentioned that pricing for additional rows is going to be coming soon. So if you're on the business plan and you just need access to additional rows, you can pay for that rather than necessarily being upgraded directly to enterprise. So as we take a look at their pricing for startup, team, and business, the thing that I really like, and I'd say this makes their pricing actually a little similar to SmartSuite in a way, is that the pricing itself really isn't going to limit a lot of those views. The views are going to be available regardless of the pricing plan that you're on. It's more things like being able to have folders for views. This public sharing is not going to be available on the lowest plan. But really, you're not being limited by features as much as it's really a focus on enterprise level features, sharing oriented features, and really the limits around each of those plans. So in general, giving their users the ability to have all of these features regardless of the plan and then upgrade based on usage based pricing, I think is going to be really attractive for a lot of people. When you first get logged into NoCodeDB, you're going to notice that it's a very simple navigation. We have this static left-hand side navigation, which we think is really popular in a lot of different no-code applications. So you see all your information at once. Of course, if you have lots of different bases, this might get a little bit more complex as you're going to have all of your bases going down the left-hand side. Now here we can see they already created a base for us. So I know this looks like documentation and in a way it's really giving you examples, but this is baked within the no-code DB architecture itself. So this getting started is actually a base. We can see that we've got different options when it comes to our base right here. And then underneath we have different tables. So this sample views is actually a table right here and keyboard shortcuts is also another table. And then nested under the tables are going to be the different views that we have. And we can create a view here. You'll notice that we have different options, grid, form, gallery, Kanban, and then the newest one is calendar. This actually launched, I think, in the past month or so. But before we dive too far into views, let's go ahead and try importing from Airtable because presumably many of you who are watching this video are interested in using NoCodeDB as an alternative to Airtable. So let's click this button to create a base. We'll give it a title and create base. And now we could create our tables manually, but in this case, we're going to import our data. So let's click on that. And you'll notice we have different options here for Airtable, a CSV, Excel, or even JSON. Let's go ahead and choose Airtable. And then here we're going to need two different things. We'll need the personal access token from Airtable as well as a shared base URL. So inside of our Airtable developers hub, we can create a new personal access token. And I'm going to be a little bit generous with which scopes I'm giving it. And then we'll give it access to which base or bases that we want. Let's create that token. So then we can copy our personal access token and we'll paste that in. And let's use this project management base that we have. We'll go ahead and press share, share publicly, and we'll copy this link. And then we'll paste our shared base URL. We've got some options of what we want it to import. So if we just want to have the table structure and not the data itself, we could uncheck this. 
But let's go ahead and bring everything that we can. You'll notice the one option we have grayed out right now is importing formula fields, which it says is coming soon. Let's go ahead and press import. You'll see this message it might take a couple of minutes to import. Great. And now we're done so we can go to our dashboard. And you'll notice now we have access to each of the tables from our Airtable base. We can click on people here. We can see the data. This even took things like the different images that we have, and it even pulled our views. So we've got one view for our FTEs, and we have another one for our contractors. And actually, as I'm looking at that, it did create the views. It actually named them that, but it didn't actually apply the filtering settings correctly. So those must not have come over. So let's see what this looks like if we want to try a different view. Let's choose a gallery. Create the view. And this looks pretty nice. Automatically, it was able to detect which field we're using for the attachments to display their images and if we want to we could edit which fields are showing like we wouldn't want to show the photo twice maybe we want to show their bio instead let's try creating a form and with our forms looks like we've got some branding we can upload our own banner our own logo we've got some different color settings we could hide the no code db branding and we've got this nice little field picker where we can select our fields on here in bulk or we could reorder them if we click on a field here, we can make that field required if we need to. And then we can also do some light validation. Maybe we want to limit the percentage to a given range, but we're not going to see things like conditionality for form fields that we would have inside of Airtable. For many people, these views will be sufficient, but if you're using Airtable very heavily for project management and you need things like timelines and Gantt charts, you're out of luck at this point. Let's take a look here at our fields for a second. So I'm on a grid view right now. Maybe I want to add a new field so I can do this with the plus button over here on the side. If we take a look at our field types here, we drop this down. You'll notice that most of the options here are very similar to what we have inside of Airtable. And that includes things like rollups and formulas as well. Let's create a field called current projects. And in this case, we want to link this to a different table because this is really foundational for our relational database. Let's go ahead and choose the links option. And you'll see here that we've got the option to create our different kinds of database relationships. We've got one-to-one, -one, has many, don't exactly love the language there, but that's basically one-to-many. And then we also have many-to-many -many as well. So let's go ahead and choose has many for this. We can choose our child table and we've got our different tables available from this base. You'll notice that we don't have tables available, say, from our getting started base. And so unlike Airtable, there's really no syncing between bases that happens. There's not one or two-way syncing that happens. And it's not like SmartSuite as well, where we can just simply reference the other bases either. We really have no option here. So when it comes to architecting your bases inside of NoCodeDB, you're going to want to make sure that all the information you need access to is self-contained in one base or database. We'll choose projects and save this. Let's go ahead and try linking a record here. We can press the plus button. I like their linking screen here, how we've got images showing for this. You'll notice that we have zero linked records. So let's go ahead and what happens if we expand this? Cool, so we can see a record view here, or we could press the plus button to link it, or we could add a new record as well. So let's go ahead and link this. I'm gonna link another record as well. So Elijah here is now linked to two projects. I can click this and it expands and shows the different projects that he's linked to. Although I don't really love the user experience of having to force that extra click. If I just wanna briefly review which projects he's linked to, there's really no way to take a look at that. If I come here and go to edit the settings for this, I would expect that I've got some options here and I really have no other way of editing this in fact, it doesn't even look like I have the ability to change the type of relationship one-to-many, many-to-many after it's already been created. Let's take a look at our formulas for a second. Choose the type of formula. And we've got our different options here. We could search for concatenate, concat here. Click on that. Now we can reference our different fields that we have as well. Let's try name. We can click on that as well puts it in curly braces here. I wanted to see if we had the same functionality as SmartSuite where we could use dot notation. I really wish every no-code tool would use that because it makes it a lot easier. So we've got some decent functionality here around the formulas. There's still lots of different options. You probably want to check and make sure that the key ones that you're using are going to be here in no-code DB, but we've got common ones like URL and code. Although in searching here, we don't have anything for arrays, unique arrays. So we don't have all the polish that we would inside of Airtable. So one of the features that I really like about NoCodeDB is if we actually click off of our data tab up here into our details, 
And we can see that we've got this ability to interact with our different fields. So we can make changes all in this nice little field editor. So instead of always having to click and then see a field or be able to hide and unhide fields, we can do this from this fields view here. So we can make changes to our different fields without a lot of extra clicks. If we click on relations, we have this nice ER diagram automatically created for us where now we have the different tables, all of their different relationships, and we didn't have to do anything. We essentially created the tables, or in this case, we imported them from Airtable, and we can see this diagram. So as we're working to design new tables, or if we're working with clients, now we can see how all of these relate to make sure we're not creating unnecessary tables, to make sure that we have the right relationships where we need them. Then here we've got a tab for APIs. I find this a little bit confusing actually when I look at this because it's nice. We get sample code here. So we've got a shell script or if we want Python and we can see this. So it makes sense that we can copy the code if we're writing some sort of application or we're integrating that we have access to this code. However, I would think there'd be a picker here to say, hey, instead of a get request, I want to do a post request or help me find these parameters or sort it this way. It gives some examples here, but that's about it. So we don't have a lot of information to go off of in this part of the API docs. But if we click over on our base and we click the little ellipses menu here and we can click on REST APIs, then this opens up, I'm not sure if it's Swagger. It kind of looks like Swagger. We've got this documentation here where now we can see all of our different types of requests. So it's kind of strange to me that those two areas aren't more integrated together, that they're in two different areas, but this documentation is really good. So here I see a link for we are hiring. I click it because I'm curious about how quickly is NoCodeDB expanding and there are no jobs posted here. Now I'm not trying to bash on NoCodeDB, but one of the themes that I've found is that there's very little information about them as a company. Yes, there is an active GitHub repo where you can see the changes that are being made, but their community is deader than a doornail. In fact, I asked a pricing related question in their own community eight days ago and no responses. And it's not just my questions. Basically, people ask questions and there's no responses. And honestly, that makes me a little bit concerned because if my company is looking at using NoCodeDB, we take a look at the support options, you can see support, community, community, community. And then you can pay for consulting at an additional cost if you're on the more expensive plan. I mean, that makes sense. We're a services organization. People pay us for consulting but the fact that there really is no support on any of these plans is a little bewildering. I even went into their Discord community, which seems to have more action going on there. And there's still tons of questions and people who are not actually affiliated with NoCodeDB are doing their best to answer some of the questions. But by and large, there's not a lot of people answering these questions that people have. And so I am a little bit concerned here because, yes, there is this large community of people who are using NoCodeDB because it's open source, but where is the infrastructure as a company? If we go on their LinkedIn page, we can see that there's no one being hired at the organization. There's never been a post on LinkedIn about NoCodeDB. If we look at Naveen, the CEO's profile on LinkedIn, we can see that there's been no comments about this or any kind of interaction about NoCodeDB for the past almost a year. And I know I'm going off a little bit on a tangent here, and it's nothing against NoCodeDB as an organization, but I've seen this happen so many times for open source software that there's great, amazing code being written by engineers who are working on this. There's a community around it, people who love to use the software, but there's no viable monetization model for this. And that's what I'm a little bit concerned about with NoCodeDB. Now, if someone from NoCodeDB is watching this video, don't hesitate and reach out to me. I'd be happy to revise my statement in the comments down below just to make sure there's an accurate picture of the growth of this company. Okay, back to it. We were talking about APIs. Let's take a look at webhooks here. We can create new webhooks inside of the system so we can have events that are happening inside of NoCodeDB and then be able to make an external trigger of a webhook in a system like Zapier or Make. That's pretty cool. We've got some options. So this could be on insert or creation of a record. And this is another thing. This language that they're using is very technical. I mean, it's correct. If you're a developer, this all makes sense to you. But if you're a business functional user, inserts not as quite as common of the language that we use. 
You can see we've got updates, deletes, and we can do this based on bulk operations as well. Now, I will say that webhooks is basically the one option that you have when it comes to automation. So unlike Airtable, which has a very robust automation tool in the platform itself, webhooks is what you have inside of NoCodeDB. So you need to be able to trigger that external system, which actually is going to handle the automation for you. You're not going to build it with some sort of drag and drop UI inside of the application. And for those of you who are currently using Airtable, it's important to know that there's no construct of Airtable's interfaces inside of here. Basically, it's just the views, and we know the views are a little bit limited as well. So if those views work for you, if you just say, yeah, I really just need a way to be able to structure my data and see it, and you don't really need the full power of interfaces, then NoCodeDB might be a good option for you, but you're going to be a little bit limited here if you've really fallen in love with the interface features inside of Airtable. Okay, so I know I've been a little bit down here on NoCodeDB, but that's because I've been wanting to save the feature I love most for the end here, which is the ability to connect to an external data source. So what does this mean? Well, there's probably thousands, if not millions of companies who have some sort of Postgres or MySQL database that's sitting somewhere else that already has information about their customers or their transactions. And instead of copying that data and importing it into Airtable, like many people do, you just want to be able to reference that data itself. Or maybe you want to be able to build your own UI on top of the data that you have. So in my base settings, we've got that option for new table or import data. That's what we did before with Airtable. And then we also have this option to connect a data source. So here we'll plug in a source name, Supabase. This is a Postgres database that's happening in the background in Supabase. In Supabase, we can look at our connection settings and we'll copy this first value here and we'll put that into our username. We'll grab our URL and update the host address. We can leave the port number, we'll paste in our password, and now let's go ahead and test our database connection. It was successful, so now let's go ahead and connect to our data source. This will set it up in the background for us. So then we've got our super base and we've got our table of videos. This was the data that I had previously imported here. We've got our slug, which we're using as a primary key. And then we can go ahead and add other fields to this that we want. We can create our views. And so this is a really great setup. If your goal is to say, hey, I've got some sort of data for our company. It lives in this data source and I want to build a UI on top of it. This is going to be a great use case for no code DB that many other no code builders can't easily do. Now, the one part I'd really like to be able to see is being able to create a new links, they call it, or link to those tables and be able to reference the other tables that we have in our base. But that doesn't seem to be possible. But that would be really cool. That would be something like what Softer does, which you could have multiple data sources and then reference them by some key like an email address. So I'd really love to see that as a future feature of NoCodeDB. Okay, so let's recap. Why might you want to use NoCodeDB? Well, first off, if you're a developer and you're looking for an open source alternative to Airtable, this is going to be a great option for you. Secondly, if you're not technical, but you're running into limitations in Airtable, for example, the pricing, or you want to be able to have access to additional records in your workspace. Again, there's some really nice things with the pricing that are going to feel much less limiting than you're experiencing with a tool like Airtable today. But I'd say this application feels very much more technical in nature. Anything from the documentation to not having automations in the platform and having to rely on webhooks, this is going to feel much more technical, and so it might not be the right fit for you as a user if you're not technical. And the last word of warning, the cloud-hosted option looks like it could be really valuable to people, and so I wish them all the success in the world. However, make sure you're weighing out those concerns that I have about the viability of the company if you're looking to actually use the cloud-hosted option. If you're just self-hosting, you're essentially controlling the software. So you don't have to really worry about that as much. If they go out of business, you still have your copy of the software itself. But if you're using their hosted option, you might want to think about whether this is going to be viable for you and your company. If you have any questions about your own automation setup, don't hesitate to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations. 